Hey guys, look at this beautiful German rifle. I was about to say shotgun. German rifle from 1937 that went to a high-ranking German leader. Keep watching and find out who it went to. Uh, this is the case uh, from the 1930s. It looks period correct. Uh, it has this leather handle and you can see uh, first of all, this is starting to, well, come take a closer look. This leather here is running, uh, wearing a little bit thin. So whoever ends up with this, uh, by the way, I have it on consignment from a collector in Florida. Uh, and we're going to help him sell it. You see the clasps here, it pops open, still has a good spring on it. And also, uh, just check out the bottom. Again, I don't want to pick it up by the handle. It survived uh, since 1937. The gun was actually made in 1930. The barrel date is uh, 1930. Uh, but it was presented to uh, Constantine Hero on his 62nd birthday. And how do I know that? Well, let's look at these plaques. This plaque is a little bit of a mystery. Here we see the plaque with his initials, and then this plaque was either on the case or on the gun. It's a little bit of a mystery because I don't see holes unless they were patched. I was trying to figure out if it was on here or here, but uh, when I got the case, it was inside the case. Um, so we'll take a look at that a little bit later, but this presentation is to um, Constantine Hero, and this says, Happy Hunting. It's on the event of your 62nd birthday, and it was presented to him. He was the Reichsfuhrer of the work service. It's actually, he's like the same as a general. He was in charge of the workforce, and we'll talk a little bit about that. But it was, it was presented to him by his uh, district leaders, and there was, I think, about 1,000 district leaders. There's actually an article. We'll pull this out later. But I found this three-page article all about the uh, German workforce, the work service, um, and three pages. But this is all the districts, all the districts leader. And so there was many groups in every district. Um, so they were small teams workforce, both men and women separated. The men obviously had uh, the more strenuous construction labor and the women were serving in hospitals and schools and things like that. But every German after World War I, there was of course the Great Depression in 19... 29, um, and Germany was hit particularly hard because they were paying reparations, they had a very high unemployment rate, and so actually in the Weimar era between the wars, they had compulsory six months in the work service, the German work service, and then followed by two years in military service. You could pick which branch, but basically you had uh, work, you were compulsory work. I, wouldn't, I didn't want to call it forced labor because that was very different. Uh, the worker service, you had a uh, compulsory six months and then two years in the military. And all of these groups uh, reported to one man, and that is this man, uh, Constantine Hero. Now, he's, he's a survivor. He probably kept a low profile. If you're like me, I never heard of the guy. Um, I've heard of Fritz Sockel, who we've, we've talked about him. We had a gun from Fritz. He did uh, presentations to some of his friends. And he had, his, uh, had them gold engraved and presented them, put his name on it. Fritz Sockel, at the end of the war, was executed for his crime, and he was in charge of the labor force, but that was the slave labor. So those were non-Germans, or so uh, foreign workers, or Jews. So he oversaw the workforce uh, within the concentration camp. He oversaw the forced labor, uh, which was used in a lot of the factories and even in the uh, rocket service. We know they use forced labor. And if you know the whole story behind Schindler's List, uh, you can see that they were uh, working in factories for the war effort. And that's very different than the compulsory um, serve your country. That was more of an honor. When you graduated from high school, uh, at the age of 18, you went into the service. And all the way up until the war began in 1939, Germans were going into the German uh, work service uh, labor service. I keep saying uh, work service. It was the labor service. So it was the German labor service. They would go in and they were uh, put on projects. Uh, leading up to the war, they were building uh, camps. They were building roads. Uh, and then, of course, during the war, they built the Atlantic Wall and fortifications and bunkers. Uh, so it was a lot of heavy labor. 
Uh, once the war started, you did have the option to go immediately into the service. So people could go into the labor service, again, voluntarily, or they could volunteer to go into military service, but they had to serve in some way. Now, as I mentioned, Constantine was a survivor. Uh, again, he kept a low profile, but he started when Hitler came to power, 1934, 1935, he became the general, the co commander of the German labor service. And he served all the way till 1945 to the end of the war. He was tried, I was surprised to learn, he was tried and he was sentenced to five years in prison. So evidently the uh, labor service, uh, since it only involved Germans and he wasn't working people to death, he uh, survived the war five years in prison and then he lived uh, to the age of 55. Uh, and passed away in Heidelberg. Now that's as opposed to the forced labor, uh, Fritz Sockel was executed at the end of the war. All right, bearing in mind that this plaque, which is very important, we're not sure where it goes, um, let's open this up and look at the gun itself. Uh, there's a couple of things in here. This is the uh, emblem or the symbol for the RAD, Reich's Labor Force. Uh, the RAD, it's on both sides, that looks like ivory inlay. I can't say for sure, but you can see it on both sides. Also on the top, you see gold inlay of uh, KH, uh, similar to here, KH, Constantine Hero. Um, so this is the stock. This reminds me of a sour. If you look at the Luftwaffe drilling, it has a similar look to it. Uh, and this actually was made in Seoul, right down the street from the Sauer factory. This is very much like the Sauer, but this is a very small uh, rifle maker. Also, a lot of people look at this and say, oh, it's a drilling. No, it's a shotgun. No, it's not a bird. It's not a plane. It is a rifle, a seven millimeter rifle made by Remo. Very small company uh, made this presentation piece. And again, the district managers all got together he evidently was a hunter, and uh, they gave him this as a gift and said, happy hunting, uh, and that was on his birthday. So let's go back to the engraving. You see the very Germanic, uh, very uh, common, well, it's an uncommon rifle, but when it was engraved, they liked this oak leaf and this style of engraving. And even this, this looks like a sour, 38, uh, excuse me, a sour uh, drilling that looks very similar. And this looks like a Krigoff. If you look at an engraved Krigoff shotgun, including the one I have that was uh, presented to Adolf Hitler, it looks like that. It has an elk, I believe. You can see that there. And this is also, I believe the German meaning here is large game. Uh, so this is for large game hunting. Again, seven millimeter. I'll show you the bullet in a, in a minute. Uh, there's a deer and a pheasant. Pheasant would be more of a shotgun, but hopefully you can see that real well. Um, just beautiful engraving. This is a uh, horn. I believe they use rhino horn, but it's a polished horn and you can see the double trigger. I'm gonna show you a little bit more of that. I'm gonna put it together uh, in a minute, but again, this plaque, a lot of times the plaque would be here. And I've seen them before where the plaque was there the holes were covered up. I don't see any sign. I see a little ding there. I don't see any sign of holes being covered up. So it, it, it is a mystery to me. I can't tell you where this once was, but I don't like it on the, the gun. So I'm happy to not have it on there. I'm happy to just have his initials in gold and the RAD emblem on it. And again, he was the leader uh, of the RAD from 34 all the way up to 45. Here's a picture of him that was in here. He's in a car. I believe he's the one standing up there. You can look at a picture of him that looks like him. And he's got some cronies in the, in the car with him. And if you focus in on these poles, uh, they have spotlights on the top. So maybe it, was, it wasn't a concentration camp, but it kind of reminds me of that. It was probably a service camp uh, that, again, 18-year-old, uh, uh, young men and young women, 
would come and do projects. By the way, the United States had the same thing under Roosevelt during the Great Depression. They also had uh, work forces, work corps that uh, helped with the national parks, um, did some work out west. The name of that program I'm blanking on, but Randy will pop it up as soon as I'm done this video because I'm talking about dirty Nazis right now, not, uh, not Americans. Uh, now you can see here is, this is one of the more interesting aspects. This is actually, this is pretty heavy. And again, the barrel is dated 1930 and they were uh, experimenting with stainless steel at the time. Beautiful, beautiful gun, beautiful barrel. And then this odd looking thing here on the end, which looks like a cauliflower, but it's not. It's the base of an antler. Uh, so they, I've not seen that before on a rifle. Uh, it looks like it would break off pretty easily, so I have to be very careful with that. But that's very cool. Never saw that before. Uh, those of you who maybe have seen those, maybe you collect German rifles. By the way, Germany was known throughout the world for making great hunting rifles and shotguns. Of course, Krigoff made some of the best shotguns in the world. Uh, this, this is this, uh, the handguard, uh, which also has the oak leaf and a little bit of engraving here. Uh, and then there's uh, the caliber and the date on the barrel. So there's a, there's a lot of markings here which uh, deserve a little more research for whoever ends up with this. We, again, I'm, I'm selling it on consignment uh, from the owner uh, who's had this for quite a while. Let's take this off because we're going to put the gun together. You can see even the screws are engraved. Pop this off. There's more clues here with the uh, different proofs. I call them bug proofs because I see a G, I see an E, sometimes there's a B, there's a U. So bug proofs because it often spells bug. Um, and so you can see the serial number here. Uh, throughout the gun, it's all matching. And yes, hold on, we are gonna put this together. Uh, but finally, we see a, a fairly common, again, they were known for their hunting rifles, but also their optics. And this is a, common maker of, of both military and civilian hunting uh, scopes. And we'll take a look at how clear this is. Okay, let's put this together. I wanna to be very careful setting this all down, uh, but let me show you a couple of the accessories before I put it together. I'm kinda of aggravating some of you because I keep saying, let me show you, oh wait, let me, no, no, let me show you this. I get all excited. This is for cleaning. Well, you gotta, a punch, never use that punch. Uh, this is for cleaning. Nothing exciting there other than I'm sure it's original. And then this does fit, this is the original sling and it does fit nicely onto the gun. I look for a maker mark, but it is braided and I don't see a maker mark. You see vertigris down in here, it's, it's old. It's been together for a long time. And then the caliber, I mentioned seven millimeter, but it is for heavy game. Uh, and so therefore seven, seven millimeter by 65 R. Uh, there's a little information there made in Germany, uh, probably would have been made for export if it weren't for the fact that it went uh, to a presentation to the head of the RAD. Here's the, uh, uh, one of the rounds uh, down inside here, you can see the box has fallen completely apart. I don't want to take it out because it's only going to make things, oh, there you go. Uh, there's, the, there's the brand which I've seen before. Uh, there's the brand from the 1930s and the caliber. And here is the bullet itself. Again, seven millimeter. The uh, K98, by the way, was eight millimeter. And this is by 65. If you ever put together a, a drilling or a shotgun, sometimes they're very hard to get together. I was amazed how, how the quality of the workmanship with this. It pops right in, and then this pops right on. Fits perfectly. And now the uh, scope, which you already saw how clear it is, pop this in first, and it pops right on. It's just so easy to put together. And uh, the other thing I wanted to show you, the two trigger. Now I'm not a hunter, and so those of you who are hunters are saying, duh, of course, the two triggers, there's only one barrel, so it can't be for double shot. Um, what's that for? Uh, well, as a hunter would tell you, you take aim. If you know about pulling the trigger, you don't, you don't wanna push hard and jerk. So you, you take aim, you find your target, and then you set it. 
And what I love about it, so it's set. And all you have to do is, I'm just amazed. You touch that and it goes off. So watch this. That's all I did. <laughs> so I see my deer. I get my shot. I set it very quietly. That's a hard pull. And then all you do is touch that and it goes, you don't even have to pull the trigger. You touch the trigger and it fires the gun. So quality workmanship. A beautiful presentation gun, oh, 1937, by the way, his birthday, his 62nd birthday was in 1937, presented to Konstantin Hero by his, uh, his district leaders.